All right, again, together with Film Fridays and Tech Tuesdays. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let one of my friends know I am live. Um, live on YouTube now. And it misspelled it as Urube and didn't, um, didn't correct it. So I'm just going to leave that. And I'm going to correct it because I'm a grammar Nazi. Um, but yeah, um, I'm live. And I guess we'll see what uh, what we're going to do. Let's see if anyone pops in or anything. Um, so yeah, the first thing I wanted to talk about was um, obviously the fact that I didn't get another episode of Film Fridays out. I am so sorry. Um, but I will say... Um, basically, I just, um, it's been something of a busy week. It was my last day at, um, uh, my, well, now previous job, um, and I'll be starting a new one here soon, um, tomorrow, actually, um, and so because of that, the, the, there was that, and and then um, over the, on the weekend, um, I can't remember, Saturday, I was working um, around the house a bit. Um, there's actually a bit of a funny story with me and Siri about that, um, you know, because I, what I had to do was uh, take, um, I had to take stuff, trash to, like, a recycling center, cardboard to our recycling center, and the recycling center is not in Apple Maps. I don't have Google Maps. Um, it's just one of those things that I've never bothered to get because Apple Maps has served me fine. Um, might be changing that um, because when when I was going to that place, it was it's a place that I don't go to often. I know how to get there vaguely. Um, because it's only a short drive from my house, but it's still, like, when I try to go there, I don't know, um, like, exactly the, ex like, I always end up there, sometimes after making a wrong turn or two. So I thought, oh, hey, you know, maybe I'll, uh, once I get here, I'll add the location so that way I never have to worry about, um, about missing you know missing where this location is um again like i won't ever i won't ever uh won't ever like forget where it is because i'll have it in maps i'll add it as a location um well the, the thing was was apple apparently doesn't have a feature like ways i think does um, cause I used Waze for a bit because the gimmick was you could use, uh, specific, like, celebrity voices. Um, unfortunately, the only one that they had around that time that I got it was because it was around Christmas with Santa. Didn't really interest me, but you could, if I remember correctly, program select locations with select keywords. So you could just, like, home and work and other places you could just, you know, set as you needed them to. So you didn't have to know the address. And so I thought I was going to do that with um, uh, Apple Maps. They don't give you that option. They just have home, work, and favorites. So I added the location to favorites, and I added it to um, my contacts as well. And I added it under several different names, all with the word cardboard in the title because it's a cardboard recycling center. Um, I first tried cardboard center or cardboard... The Cardboard Center, Cardboard Recycling, The Cardboard Recycling Center, Cardboard Recycling Center. I tried all these different variants, um, you know, Recycling Center for Cardboard. I tried everything. And for whatever reason it was, um, the word cardboard triggers staples. Now, here's where it gets frustrating is because Siri recognizes that it's a contact. Like, if I brought up Siri... And said, get me directions to, and I named the contact. It would properly capitalize the words like it knows it's a contact. But then still direct me to Staples. Drove me up the wall. Um, I spent too long fighting with Siri and then finally just threw my hands up. And then I remembered, oh wait, I'm on the iOS 12 beta. I'll get to that in a minute. I can program a shortcut for this. So I did. Still reported the bug to Apple, though, because it should be a case of, you know, if it recognizes the contact like Siri obviously did, because she would, you know, write it out as I was saying it, 
and then revert and then it would go blank for a second and then it would be capitalized like the contact was and then not bring me to the location of where my contact is it's like you know if i if i were to say hey take me to so and so it should you know if the, that contact has a a uh an address i would want them to bring me um to to bring me to the the name of the the location that is set in the contacts, not like some random place that might have the same name as a friend of mine, you know. Like if I have a friend named Sherry, and I say take me to Sherry's house, she shouldn't take me to some random waffle house that's owned by a woman named Sherry, and that's the name is Sherry's Waffle House or something. You know what I'm saying? Like it's in the contact. It should know. Take me to Sherry's. Um. So yeah, that's um, that's yeah, that 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 was Siri for me. Um, some technical frustrations, and so I wanted to get that off my chest as I get ready for um, get ready for for this. So we we actually have quite a bit of news. Um, and I'll start with Film Fridays since that's what I'm behind on right now. Um. And the first thing that I want to talk about was uh, we got our first, like, official trailer, like, a full-length trailer for The Predator and not a uh, teaser like the last one was. And, meh. I mean, I'm not really a fan of The Predator franchise, so I didn't see a whole lot that really interested me. Um, there was a really bad mom joke by uh, uh, Keegan-Michael Key, if I remember correctly. Um... And a lot of the responses I've seen on general media, uh, home media, has been that this trailer was just okay. Um, you know, so there's that. We got a, a trailer for that. Um, you know, we got some uh, news for uh, Tom Holland apparently revealed the... Uh, the name for the Spider-Man Homecoming sequel. So I think Spider-Man is going to come back in Avengers 4, I would assume, if we're going to get another Avengers movie, uh, or another uh, Spider-Man movie, unless this movie takes place in between Spider-Man Homecoming and uh, Avengers Infinity War. But uh, this one is going to be called Spider-Man Far From Home. I guess they're keeping with that that home title. Um, and we also, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Feige confirmed... Doctor Strange 2. Doctor Strange is getting the sequel. So it's like, why are you confirming these sequels here to people that are dead? And I think they, they announced an official sequel to Black Panther 2. Um, granted, I think that was before Avengers Infinity War, but it's still just the thought of like, you're confirming things to characters who are dead, and you want us to believe they're dead in-universe? Unless these are all prequels to Avengers Infinity War, um, I think it's safe to assume they're all going to be coming back in Avengers 4. Um, so, yeah, there, there's that. Um, and also, apparently, there is um, a surprise director in, that has been seen with... In, uh, has been seen with leaders at Disney and Marvel... And that's Kevin Smith. So yeah, um, Kevin Smith is like, like, you know, he's had some independent films like Clerks, Mallrats, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, and other films like that. Um, and he's a bit of a cult director. He's not like a super well-known director, but he's one that geeks respect. And uh, on, like, the, the Flash, for example, he's directed episodes of The Flash. I think he directed an episode of Sur Supergirl as well, maybe a couple. Um, and the, I just remember the one episode that I saw um, that he directed for The Flash in, I think it was season two, um, was super good. It was one of the best episodes of that season. And so to hear him, apparently he has been meeting um, with Disney and we wonder what it could be. Could it be Star Wars? Could it be directing Marvel? We don't know. All that we know is he's been seen meeting with Disney. And it's like, 
Anything would be cool. Him getting a Marvel movie would be awesome. Him directing a Star Wars movie would be awesome. Because, uh, say what you will about, like, about the guy, um, he knows his lore pretty well. Um, he's, uh, from what I understand, he's a respected comic writer as well. And, you know, again, his episodes of The Flash that I've seen anyways have been, and from what I can tell, other episodes that I haven't seen have been really well received. Um, you know, he's, uh, when it comes to, you know, geekery, he's a well-respected name. Even if you don't necessarily like the films he makes, he's a pretty well-loved nerd. Um, and so to have him, and uh, one that has good grasp of the characters, typically that he, that he, uh, writes or directs. And so to see him possibly directing a Marvel or Star Wars movie would be like, yes, please. Um, so there's that. Um, there's Jared Leto is apparently going to be starring in a Spider-Man spinoff um, as Morbius. And apparently this is going to be a um like not a spider-man film but like venom a standalone movie based on a villain from the spider-man universe and i don't know like is sony trying to do like villains un connected universe like an evil version of the mcu i mean because they're doing venom and then it looks like they're doing morbius um what what um what could they be doing here you know like i've i've wondered that um i it, all we know is is that he's like officially been confirmed we don't have a date for the film we have um a director for it and apparently that's uh if i'm saying his name right daniel espinosa um and he directed the movie safe house but <sighs> Yeah, it's it's just one of those things of like, okay, what, mm -hmm, what are you doing? What what's up? What what are the plans here? I need to know. Um, you know, and then again, going with um, more Marvel news. Um, Disney has apparently a part of their agreement to buy Fox, um, to try to help ease the anti-competitive like antitrust or whatever companies that that the doj has or whatever they've agreed to sell um or not buy uh fox sports since they already own espn it would be seen as owning something of a num uh, of a monopoly on um the sports network so um disney owning fox as well as espn would be seen as highly anti-competitive um, but they ag have agreed to sell them off, and that apparently has satisfied the DOJ. It's really looking like Fox is going to sell to Disney, um, the, because like like Bob Iger said, they've already had a head start with the DOJ and working on um, you know getting a head start for this. Um, they've raised now, of course, have raised their offer to higher than that of Comcast. Um, Comcast, if they go with Comcast, they'd have to, Fox would have to start all over, essentially. And it just looks like this is the deal that everyone wants. Um, and a deal between Disney and Fox would, would mean that the characters of X-Men and Fantastic Four could become part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Then there's also me. I'm like, um, Fox owns the rights to the Star Wars original trilogy, um, yes, I'm selfish. Please make that happen. Re-release them in beautiful 4K, uh, or even in just an HD. Give me an official print, please, of an actual, like, theatrical cut of the original Star Wars trilogy. I would love that. Please make it happen. Um, and... Of course, this would also mean that Disney would own Avatar, um, which already has two sequels in production, the Simpsons, Alien and Predator series. So that makes, um, you know, w the future of of where those movies will go is kind of 
is it is interesting to see where Shane Black takes Predator just because like with Disney owning owning the franchise how would that franchise move forward you know um and that's been the question for a lot of these more R-rated franchises like um Aliens and Deadpool and um oops and um Predator, uh, for kind of loud. I lost a spot. Uh, what would happen to those? Would those be forced to be softened up to appease, you know, Disney's stockholders and be more family friendly? Who knows? Um, I really, I'm of the opinion I don't think they would. Um, just because I think Disney understands the value that they hold. Um, and they would see, especially like in the case of Deadpool, that that series has become like a staple of it is the fact that it is you know this loose canon um you know irreverent r-rated film series and i think that's part of the charm for a lot of the people and i think disney recognizes that so even if they own fox and there's a deadpool 3 or you know spinoff or whatever they would still let them have that freedom just because disney has been pretty hands-off with marvel and lucasfilm uh in in the past and also too so i don't think they would mandate fox would have to meet certain requirements of ratings and stuff like that and i think also they would see too that fans want this and so to change something like deadpool would result in fans not coming back um and so i think they i think they understand that um so there's that uh in in the news regarding uh, non-Marvel news, we got some DC news, and um, they've announced... Let me load. Sorry. Let it load. Let it load. Let it load. We got new details on the DC Universe streaming service. Um, and this will include not only shows and movies, but it would also include comics and stuff. So... Um, there is beta access sign up at DCUniverse.com. Service revealed today that DC Universe will be a mix of new television shows, classic filmed content like the original Superman, storehouse of some of DC's greatest comic books. The, DV the service will feature breaking news, a DC-centric encyclopedia, access to exclusive merchandise, and a community area to connect with other fans, earn rewards, enter sweepstakes, and, con and, and contests. Um, so, yeah, and then the show's... That we've seen are Titans, Doom Patrol, Swamp Thing, uh, Young Justice, Outsiders, and Harley Quinn. Um, so there's there's some um, uh, some stuff that's particularly exciting, exciting, especially the Young Justice Outsiders is like that's something that people have were super pumped to see, and so I think that right there is going to bring people to the streaming service alone. Um, just to see that conclusion of the Young Justice story, because that was something, like, there was a whole, like, campaign to get that show saved. Like, it was on Cartoon Network, and then it got canceled. Then it was on Netflix, and then there were rumors that it might be picked up by Netflix or something. So, you know, if they could get to as many views um, as they needed on Netflix, it could open up, you know... Uh, it could open up for another season, and that happened. It, You know, they got the needed views uh, to make people aware that, yes, people still want to see this show, and Young Justice Outsiders, the con uh, the continuation of the Young Justice story will be coming to the uh, DC uh, Universe streaming service, as well as, I, I think they're offering a lot of content that you don't see, like, you know, this has an advantage of, you have Netflix, Hulu, um, Amazon Prime, all that. With Amazon Prime being the only service that is a subscription service that you get more for just um, than just video. Like Amazon Prime, you get not only video, but you get free two-day shipping, you get music, you get all that. Um, so that's why a lot of people do Amazon Prime. It's not for just for the video content, although some people do do that because they do have some um, of their own stuff. Then you have the fact that um, Netflix and Hulu are mainly television and movie-based um, with both of those um, offering acclaimed originals like Netflix with, for example, the Marvel shows. Um, they have, I think, Glow is getting a new series, uh, which is apparently like an 80s female wrestling show. I don't know. Um, looks a little weird from what I've seen of the like the promos and stuff. 
Uh, you have 13 Reasons Why, which is controversial, um, and not a whole lot of people actually like that show. Well, there are some people that do, but a lot of people don't. Um, uh, but you have, like, uh, uh, Stranger Things in particular. Like, Hulu has Handmaid's Tale, Netflix has uh, Stranger Things. Those are two the two things that I get talk that I hear all the most. Amazon Prime has Man on the High Castle. Um, and so each platform seems to have their big show that they, that, people watch um and so like what can dc bring to that the, the, there's outsiders for young justice but also too the benefit that the dc universe streaming service has is not just a streaming service it also brings you comics it brings you classic movies um and it brings you exclusive merch and other stuff it looks cool um and they're offering more than just movies and television, so they're helping stand out in that regard. And plus, um, we got our first look at, like, Robin from Titans, and he kind of looks cool, actually. Um, granted, also, other things from Titans have looked kind of comical. Um, so it's... We'll see. We'll see about that show. Could be good, could be bad. Um, we'll, we'll see. And then the last bit of news I wanted to talk about, and again, I apologize if I miss anything this week, due to just, just due to the fact that been busier than i would like um and i was hoping to if not do it friday then get it done saturday and then that didn't happen then sunday we had people over so today is monday and just research didn't have time to really do much more research i just had to get the episode out um but the last bit of uh news is um doctor who has not only got their new um showrunner chris chibnall they got their new doctor jody whitaker they now have their new composer um, Ray Gold announced that he would be leaving after C Series 10, and Doctor Who um, now has a new composer. And if I'm saying his name wrong, I apologize. Uh, Sagun Ekinola is uh, the new composer. He is a award-winning... Um, uh, he is... Yeah, he's an award-winning composer, from what I understand. Um... He was a part of the BAFTA Breakthrough Brit program in 2017. And, uh... Sorry. I'm trying to figure out where... Ah, no, that's not it. Ah, yes, here we go. He won this... No, that's... Well... Crap. Okay, so... He's scored for other things. I, I I was misspoken. He himself he's he's been um a part of the uh, uh of the BAF, BAFTA Breakthrough Brit program, um, and he has done um show uh, shows like Shola Amu's debut feature film Moving Image, which had its world premiere at the 2016 LA Film Festival, and it won Special Recognition and Narrative Directing Award at Black Star Film Festival uh, 2016. Um, his score for Dear Mr. Shakespeare received an honorable mention for the 2017 BSO Jerry Goldsmith Award. So he, I guess he, he has been recognized, even if he himself haven't, hasn't won an award, he's been recognized and has scored award-winning stuff before. He's also done um, uh, BBC Two's landmark four-part series, Black and British, A Forgotten History. Um, and there, there, he has some pretty impressive credits for being a relatively unknown composer for Doctor Who. Um, and Chris Chibnall uh, said this about him. Welcome to the Doctor Who family. We're over the moon. Sagan's agreed to join us to provide the score for the next phase of the Doctor Who adventure. From our very first conversations, it was obvious Sagun was a... Sagun? Sagun? I don't know. Was a compassionate, collaborative, and delightful human being, as well as a fantastic and bold composer. We're looking forward to introducing... Uh, we're looking forward to introducing the world to his exciting and emotional soundtracks for the 13th Doctor. And he, uh, and he himself said, Doctor Who is woven into the fabric of British culture and recognized globally. I am absolutely thrilled to be given the pr privilege of working on such a beloved series and to bring my musical voice to it. So, pretty exciting. Um, it looks like this is promising news. Um, I'm... Yeah, I mean... As much as I hate to see Murray Gold go, um, I think fresh blood for the score could be interesting and could 
bring like help this new g generation of Doctor Who um, really just re revamp it more than just having a new showrunner and a new face um, and actually give give that third element of newness i guess you could say um and really help it set be set apart from the russell t davies and stephen moffat era of doctor who so that's that's actually really exciting so um now let's move on to the tech tuesdays part of this um of this week so um and so the the next the next thing that we were going to be uh, talking about is um, first up, uh, Samson and Apple have settled. Um, their dispute is finally over, and apparently, um, uh, Apple and Samson, uh, according to court documents filed with the Northern District Court of California. Uh, have agreed to drop and settle the remaining claims and counterclaims in the design patent legal battle that saw them back in court in May. This has been a battle that has spanned seven years, and it looks like they're finally, um, they're finally, uh, just they're they're done. It looks like finally they're just they're, they've agreed to settle. Um, Samsung will probably pay Apple a bit of money, and of course, you know, everyone's lawyers are going to get rich. Um, and with the last known element to this story being that Samson had been ordered by the jury to pay Apple $539 million following the May damages retrial. Um, so it just looked like something that, um, you know, it kept on being, like, I think that was the second time that Samson had been it had been ruled against them. And so it just looked like it was going to be a case of Samson was constantly getting ruled against and then they were claim you know countering it or claiming it or appealing it sorry that's what i'm looking for um appealing it and then it going back to court and then them losing again and it just looks like you know it was decided to just just end it um so there's there's that um yeah so good news for that if you're an apple and samsung person um you know if you're a fan of either of them, their debate is finally over. The battle is over. Um, and then, uh, speaking of Apple, apparently the rumors are um, LG will be supplying two to four million OLED panels for this year's tentatively titled iPhone 10 Plus. So there's the iPhone 10, which I am a proud owner of, and the sequel um, to that will be uh, this year. There will be the iPhone 10, whatever the follow-up is 10s whatever um but then also there will be a 6.5 inch version of it that's a plus size and that will apparently have two to four million screens being provided by lg obviously they'll have to meet um apple's standards i'm not too concerned yet just because um Apple has good quality control. Like, I don't think this is going to be another Pixel 2 XL standard. Like, for crying out loud, the, the iPhone X uh, got higher rating, uh, was was deemed to be better than Samsung's own screens on their S8s last year. So I think if, you know, they have high standards for Samsung, I think they'll keep those same standards for LG. Um, and unless proven otherwise, I don't think there's going to be a huge issue with these screens. I think if... LG can't deliver. They're not going to move forward with. Uh, they're not going to move forward with LG. I think because I, I think the rumor is that the first testing will be in July. Um, so that gives uh, Apple, you know, uh, two months or so to say no, nope, that's not going to work out. We'll stick with Samson for this year, um, or to say yes, good job. Um, you will provide these two to four million displays. Obviously, Apple needs the competition um, to keep the prices low for their screens and for their phones. Um, I don't know. I mean, the rumor is that we would see the prices drop for the premium flagship iPhones this year. Drop about a hundred to two hundred dollars from eight ninety nine to 999 um you know so we're we, instead of a thousand dollar phone a 900 dollar phone 
that was the rumors, and there has been rumors that uh, Apple has been negotiating, bringing the price down for the screens with Samsung, and it looks like this might be a way to do that. Even if it's just a ploy, maybe to get Samsung to drop their prices, uh, Apple looks like they're going with LG um, for at least some of the screens. And I think the quicker Apple and other companies can get away from relying on Samsung, the cheaper we'll see OLEDs come you know, become because of the fact that right now it's only Samsung that really is making these screens. So um, there's that. And speaking of LG, the V40 is rumored to not only have face unlock, um, which all Android phones have had for a while not quite as good as the iphone 10 but you know up still they've had it uh and excuse me and it's rumored to have a notch like the g7 yay for notches um you know just keep copying apple people um you're not a mockery if you're not a mockery by apple fans you're you know it's not or what, what, how did I put that one time? If it's not enough to be a mockery of Apple fanboys, you're going to make yourself a mockery of Android fanboys as well by just copying everything Apple does. Um, and by copying the notch, you're, that's how it's done. Um, but on top of including face unlock and the notch, that of course you can turn off by turning the pixels black, the V40 is supposed to have five cameras on the phone. Now, before you get, what? Five cameras, that's a lot. Two of them will be on the front, which the Pixel 2 XL is rumored to have as well. Um, and three cameras on the back. So we've already seen the Huawei P20 have three cameras on the back of um, of their device. So this wouldn't be outside of the norm. And so it would essentially be the Pixel 2 XL front facing design with the P20 back design. You know, three cameras on the back, two on the front. Yeah, um, and the two on the front will allow the phone to unlock with your face and possibly allow a 3D map of the face to, rec to be recorded. But that's not certain. It's just a rumor, but it does make sense. You know, that's how um, the iPhone on the back of the phone allows for portrait, uh, portrait mode uh, is because of the two lenses. It can tell distance and all that. Um, and so it would make sense that with two cameras, they'd have a better grasp of what a face looks like versus, you know, the background. And so, yeah, um, a 3D model. That's, um, that's, that's the rumors there. Um, uh, so the V40, some exciting news. It sounds like they're just going all in with the cameras there. Um, Then there was the news, uh, we got another rendering of the Pixel 2 XL and Pixel 2 that basically confirmed Pixel 2 XL is probably going to have a notch, uh, or Pixel 3, sorry, Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL, um, Pixel 3 XL will probably have a notch while the Pixel 3 will not have a notch. Um, so in this case, unlike, uh, this year where the Pixel 2 XL had the better design, the Pixel 3 will have the better design over the Pixel 3 XL. Um, and then in a bit of AI news, there is Bigsby will be shutting down, uh, according to the Verge, uh, a letter went out from, uh, the Samsung, uh, awards program, uh, and excuse me. The company announced this week that on August 10th, the Bigsby, my Bigsby level program will be shutting down. And what this feature did was it rewarded users for playing with and learning how to use Bigsby. You receive new background color options, Samsung pay points that could be cashed in for discounts, among other things. And, um, you know, the email itself uh, says this, Dear Bigsby users, we are sorry to inform you that my Bigsby level service and related contents will no longer be available as of August 10th, 2018. Earning Samsung rewards points through my Bigsby level service will no longer be available from that date, and you can continue to use unlocked Bigsby settings and background colors before the termination date, and your personal information will be handled in accordance with the privacy policy. Um... Our customer support team will be available to answer any uh, any questions or concerns you may have. So there's that. Um, I have a like, but no. Oh, oh, I have a viewer. Sweet. Hi. 
Um, so yeah, so people who use Bigsby, I think this was. I, I mean, I'm, I don't have a Samsung device, but this would be something that would be like an incentive for me to use Bigsby if I had one, because yeah, points that you can redeem for cool crap. Um, you know, why not? Why not use Bigsby over the Google Assistant? And it should be noted um, that while Siri Shortcuts, I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but Siri Shortcuts is actually pulling from Bigsby. Bigsby um, has, uh, I think they call it keywords. Um, I'm not for sure. I don't remember exactly what it was that my Samson rep talked to me about, but I remember it was basically you could set keywords to do certain things that you program in Bigsby. And, oh, what is this that Siri is doing? Siri shortcuts. You can program Siri to do certain things that you want it to do with certain keywords. What's funny is, is uh, I think Alexa does this. I don't know who does it first, but uh, Bigsby is the one, the one um, digital assistant that you don't hear talked about that much. And it has a feature that now even Apple is ripping off. Um, so, yeah. And... Darn, I, I was actually thinking just the other day before I read this news that uh, that Bigsby would be, uh, the My Bigsby level would be shutting down. I had, was just thinking the other day, you know, it would be cool if I got rewards for the fact that I use Siri for certain things, especially after the story I told this morning uh, or earlier in this podcast where, you know, it, um, it kept messing me up just. I love you, Siri, but you you suck sometimes. Um, and now, of course, like like the um, Siri shortcuts, that is a way. Like I, I've always believed, it's been a way to get around some of the flaws that Siri has. Because now, of course, with that issue I was talking about, where you know the GPS wasn't going to my contacts location, and instead going to a location based on just one keyword. Um, and taking me to the wrong place, um, series shortcuts, I was able to get by that, um, by, you know, programming it into, uh, as a series shortcut in settings. So, but it's always been a thing of, you know, I think series should get point, you know, I should get points for using series, especially since, you know, um, yeah, it's the one thing that every, I mean, it was something that there was a article that came out where, you know, people were asked about the iPhone 10. It was a user review thing. You know, people love the iPhone 10 except for Siri. It's the one thing people consistently don't like. Um, so Apple fixed that. And, but a great way to, you know, um, help people use Siri, even if she sucks, would be to, you know, bring along, you know, incentives. You know, hey, you get points. You get, you know, you know, points to get these certain Apple items and all that. I would totally use Siri all the time. Um, so I'm sad to see that my Bigsby level is going away because if I was a Samsung user, that would motivate me to use it over Bigsby over Google Assistant. Now, if I was a Samsung user, I'd be like, mm, okay, what's the point of using Bigsby anymore? I'm just going to shut the button off and use Google now. Um, and then, you know, yeah. Uh, there's that. There's Samsung getting rid of that function. But in more positive AI news, apparently, according to TheVerge.com, Google Duplex, the the big thing that was at um, Google's I.O. event this year, um, you know, that... That, that that the Google Assistant is so human sounding, it can make calls for you, and then and then you know fool the person who's calling. It can sound like a human, okay. Um, and apparently, uh, as of June twenty seventh, uh, they uh, the Verge ran a report that. Uh, yesterday, Google save gave several small groups of journalists a chance to demo Duplex. If you don't recall, Duplex is the AI system designed to make human-sounding voice calls on your PFs so as to automate things like booking restaurants and hair appointments. And, you know, in the demo, we saw what would be like for a restaurant to receive a phone call and a, um, the, um, and also a hair appointment, um, and in fact, each of us in turn took a call from Duplex as it tried to book a reservation. The briefings were in service of the news that Google is about to begin limited testing in the coming weeks. If you're hoping that means you'll be able to try it yourself, 
Uh, no, Google is starting with a set of trusted tester users. According to Nick Fox, Vice President of Product and Design for Google Assistant, it will be limited to businesses that Google has partnered with rather than any old restaurant or hair appointment or stylist. The rollout will be phased. In other words, uh, first up will be calls about holiday hours, then restaurant reservations will come later this summer, and then finally haircut appointments will be last. And, then, and those are the only three domains that Google has trained Duplex on. So Duplex is working essentially like they're 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 actually going forward there it's not just a oh this is something cool we're working on and you'll never see the light of day it's just something that we can do um it is actually something that they're testing they're giving it at least to businesses right now to test and um of course right now it's pretty limited but it looks like it'll probably uh broaden its reach in the future i'm sure that uh, in the future we're gonna see a lot of things duplex can do um, so yeah, um, that's some good news for Google Duplex is that it's actually a functional program. Uh, we're not, we're not getting a, just a, a, this wasn't the, the thing that Google unveiled wasn't just a, oh, hey, look, we have this cool tech. Um, when will it be released? We don't know. It's just something we wanted to show off. It's, it's actually something that, uh, that, is going to see the light of day someday. Um, and then, last bit of news before I talk about my experiences with uh, one week now on iOS 12. Um, has it been only been a week? Jeez, it feels like it's been much longer than that, but that's because I've loved it so much. Um, but uh, a severed fiber cable has caused a nationwide outage for Comcast users. Um, Comcast is currently experiencing a nationwide outage in the U.S. This is as of june 29th maybe it's fixed by now who knows um granted it's only been what two three days today's july 1st no july 2nd so it's been like three four days um and comcast is currently experiencing a nationwide outage in the u.s which explains why users on social media have been complaining that they were unable to connect to play platforms like sony's playstation netflix xbox live over Comcast services. Essentially, the outage may be causing problems for anyone using uh, Xfinity as an ISP, regardless of what products, apps, or services they're trying to access. There have been over 11,000 reports as of 12.30 uh, p.m. June 29th uh, for Comcast. Comcast confirmed the outage on Twitter with a spokesperson saying the company is working to restore service and Microsoft has updated its status page to indicate that Xbox Live members may be experiencing connection problems. One and this and Comcast Cares on Twitter said one of Comcast's large backbone network partners had a fiber cut that we believe is also impacting other providers. Uh, it is currently affecting our business and uh, residential internet, video, and voice customers. We apologize and are working to get services restored as soon as possible. Uh, so yeah, um. I haven't seen any news that Comcast is back up, so it looks like people are right now down for the count um, with um, with Comcast. So, uh, yeah, there's that. And then, you know, yeah, as if we didn't need uh, more rumors that... Uh, um, you know, Comcast just is terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then, of course, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was I am on the iOS 12 beta. Uh, it's, I've been on it for one week. And I must say, like, it's been a... I have not really regretted updating at all. Um, have not seen too many problems outside of Siri, but that's not an iOS 12 problem. That's a Siri problem. Um, in fact, being on the beta has allowed me to complain about, to Apple, about these problems. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, the, um, the first thing that I noticed that, uh, I, I was like, yes, I want this, I need this now, give it to me, was, uh, group notifications, those have been already just within a couple days of, of having it, was immensely, uh, useful. Having, uh, you know... Like, there was one day where I woke up, and I had, um, 
I had like, I think 15 notifications, but they were only like a couple slots because I had like three or four emails, like five texts, um, two notifications from another email. And then, um, there was, there was a couple other notifications, but it was just something like it was only what normally would have been like two pages worth of constant scrolling was just one little swipe up to see the end, you know, just one little, you know, I saw most of it on the lock screen and then I just kind of, you know, swiped up like that. Oh, there's, you know, there, that's all of it. And I could expand things. It's been wonderful to not have my lock screen be this mess. Oh, being able to manage uh, notifications directly from the, uh, the lock screen has been great. Being able to tell certain notifications that I maybe get a lot of, but don't necessarily want to hear the dinging go off all the time has been really nice being able to manage, tell them to manage quietly and also be able to go directly into the notification settings has been a lifesaver. Thank you, Apple, for these improvements. Um, also, do not disturb. Um, tying with bedtime has been awesome. Um, not getting woken up in the middle of the night by a random email uh, has been really nice. I love that. And then, of course, when you wake up in the morning, you if you have it set, it'll uh, to go off with your alarm or, you know, at the same time that your alarm goes off or to just you can tell it to uh, keep going, like do not disturb until a certain period and then you can manually turn it off, which is what I do. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was great. So, like, every morning I get uh, a good morning and I get a review of the weather. Uh, cool stuff. And then um, there's also Do Not Disturb has I got to use until I leave this location. That was awesome because I used it at church yesterday. Um, so, like, I just, when I got to church, I put my phone on silence. And I was like, oh, hey, you know, so I don't have to deal with uh, anything buzzing me even. I don't have to deal with, you know, uh, vibrations in my pocket. I can, you know, tell it until I leave this location. Do Not Disturb me. And then and I watched it. I, like, pulled my phone out and I watched as Do Not Disturb turned off as uh, we left the parking lot uh, for the church. That was awesome. Um, I'm loving the little tweaks and little changes that Apple is making. Um, there have been a few glitches. I'm not getting certain notifications um, from, like, Twitter and YouTube. So, like, there have been times where I'll go on Twitter and see, like, I have three notifications from people I follow. Um, and then I'll go on YouTube and see that I've missed, like, two videos from uh, subscriptions, which that reminds me. I should probably check YouTube. Yep, so just for an example, like, I did not, there was no notification on, and I showed you this earlier, I, I scrolled up and on my lock screen, there was no notification, but yet when I go into YouTube, you can't really see it, but I have two, um, I have two alerts uh, from my, from my uh, subscriber box, um, one of them being this channel going live, so... Yeah, I'm not getting alerts for some apps. However, thankfully, it's not, like, super necessary. I'm still getting emails. I'm still getting texts. Um, and I'm still getting phone calls. I have not noticed there has not been any, like, per like performance phone-breaking bugs. It's just been little things. That's been the really only bug I've seen so far. Um, there has been an occasional note. Like, it seems like the, the notifications have been the biggest thing. There will sometimes be bugs where notifications will stay on lock screen after I, even after I close them, uh, like clear them away. Um, but telling them to clear all notifications will eventually get rid of it. Um, so that's nice. Um, being able to add a second appearance in Face ID is super nice. Um... I can, like, now when I wake up in the morning, what I did was the very next day after enrolling in the iOS 12 beta, I woke up with bedhead like I said it would, and uh, I programmed it, and so now it recognizes my bedhead face. And now when I wake up in the morning and I need to check my phone, it's not, you know, ha forcing me to put in the passcode. I don't know what it is. Face ID has been great, but that one little thing of being able to add your bedhead face for a second appearance has been awesome, and it makes Face ID more reliable in the morning, which is the common thing for people that use... Um, uh, face ID that's been the top complaint is that uh, that it doesn't recognize me in the morning when my hair is messed up and my face is groggy you know so yeah um, that's really nice and then to screen time being able to to, to look at uh, how I'm using my phone um, is nice and Siri shortcuts you can for certain like Today, I've used the phone for about five hours. Um, 
it just appeared now it's gone in about two of those hours um have been uh games and um entertainment on youtube so um you know batman i've been playing a lot of batman don't know if you can see it there yeah it's you're not gonna be able to see it it's too bright but i've been playing the batman telltale series games and holy crap those are great games and uh and then of course youtube i've watched about an hour of youtube um and about 30 minutes on safari that's been about it um so yeah that's that's pretty nice to to actually be like mm, you know how am i using my phone actually get an accurate readout has been super nice um and those are the main the the main things that i've seen um come to ios 12 there have been other little improvements, but not major ones, just little ones that have been like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, but not like overall, like a, a massive change, just little tiny changes have been made here and there um, to to the, to this. Um, yeah. And what's and, and in the settings, you can set, like I said, you can set certain uh, shortcuts for Siri already, even though those Siri shortcuts, the app hasn't um, hasn't like worked, you know, like the, the app itself, Siri shortcuts app, which is right now is workflow and you can actually do that. So I have a workflow set um, where I'll tell it to do something to launch that workflow for me, um, based on the keyword. And then I can tell, um, looking at wallet, I can program certain payments to go. Um, and okay. So one of them, this is, this is one I'll, I'll demonstrate. Hey Siri, send a message to the master of squirrels. And it brings up it brings up uh, Lord Squirrel's uh, chat bubble, um, which is super nice. That's a comment because I was uh, texting Lord Squirrel in the, earlier in the week, and then I went into settings and saw send a message to Lord, to Lord Squirrel. Um, and so I made a key phrase, and so whenever I say that, it automatically launches. Um, there are certain, and then of course there was another one, like I did end up programming uh, a series shortcut for the Cardboard Center. Um and so I got around that glitch that I was talking about earlier where it sent me to Staples instead of the place in my contacts. So, um, yeah, those have been the main takeaways is that Siri Shortcuts, the little bit that we can play with right now has been awesome. Um, and I've used it for a few things and I want I can't wait for Siri Shortcuts to be unveiled in the fall so other apps can use it. So that way I can, like, you know, program YouTube to when I say uh, – show me puppies we'll start my cute puppy playlist that i have uh um you know and different and just different things like that like i want to be i want it to be more uh like more programmed with the the apps i use um and right now if a workflow can make it work it it, it can work there but mainly right now um, like I do have a, to launch a certain, uh, certain channel feed, um, on YouTube, I can use a workflow via Siri. Um, but it's still just, it's not as smooth as I would like, especially because I essentially have to work it to where workflow takes me to a share page to then run another workflow to open it in YouTube. It's not because right now the only U uh, workflow you have to watch YouTube videos is it opens it in Safari. Um, it doesn't actually open it in the YouTube app. So when I say tell Siri to do that, run that shortcut for me, it still is not as, as nice it would be as if YouTube itself had a shortcut to launch that subscription or launch that channel for me. So I can just watch a playlist or the latest video or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, um, you know, group notifications have been nice. I have not seen too many bugs yet. Just some minor ones with the notifications with certain apps not updating like they should. Um, and um, screen time has been great. Uh, also, autocorrect. I swear, I think autocorrect. They've improved autocorrect. I don't know what it has been with uh, on iOS 11, but it seemed like on iOS 11, uh, autocorrect was not the greatest and um, it seems like they've improved autocorrect for iOS 12. Like, it actually knows the context of the sentence when I'm talking. It seems like it suggests words better. It corrects words better. Um, it could just be placebo of the old, oh, iOS 12 has made everything better, you know, and really 
it's just, you know, not changed, but it's just because, you know, they, they made that part of the keyboard darker, um, makes me think it's better when in reality it's just not, um, you know, and it's the same. I don't know. Um, but it just seems like that. Like autocorrect has gotten better. Um, do not disturb, uh, the new features to do not disturb have been great. And, uh, yeah, um, there's definitely more to play around with. I can't wait for the next public beta to maybe fix some of these bugs that we're experiencing. Um, I'm hoping that none of the bugs are too critical. Like, I'm hoping I never experience a bug that makes a certain function unusable. Because if I can't use my phone, well, I don't know what I'll do. Uh, <laughs> um, just because I've been liking iOS 12 too much to go back to iOS 11. But, yeah, uh, that has been pretty much an hour of discussion. Um, I've gotten through everything I wanted to talk about. So I will leave that with, I will leave the episode with that. Um, my name is Sir Cal. This has been uh, another live stream Tech Tuesdays and Film Fridays together. Um, I am your host, Sir Cal, on the Geek Source Entertainment Podcast. And uh, yeah, I will, uh, I'll see you later. I hope you've enjoyed. Toodaloo.